Hey everyone and welcome! Today I'm going to be talking about some of the challenges I've encountered while trying to implement nebulas in my game. Because last week I talked about how I came up with the art style for my nebulas and how I figured out what I could use to make it look the way I want. But this week I want to talk a little bit more about the uh, difficulties and the challenges I've had to make it look and work just the way I want it. That said, even though I had the look I wanted, there were still quite a few technical challenges that I needed to fix to be able to implement this inside Solar Rogue. I had to figure out how I'm going to generate random shapes inside my tile map for the nebula. And of course, I also needed to figure out how I'm going to detect that the ship is passing through the nebula and apply some kind of effects on it. But one of the biggest problem I wasn't expecting to have was that for the tests I was doing, I was using the screen UV because to generate the noise inside the shader, I need some kind of constant coordinate that I can use to generate the random value for my noise. And this has to stay always the same because otherwise then it would keep changing every frame. And the screen UV is nice because it's always the same from the top left corner of the screen to the bottom right corner of the screen. But it also means that if you're moving the camera, the noise is going to stay always in the same place while the rest of the screen is moving, which is going to look a little bit strange. Now, at first I thought it looked okay, but the more I played with it, the more I found it really annoying. So I wanted to try to have really constant coordinates. Now, fixing this wasn't as simple as I was expecting because normally it would have been as simple as taking the screen UV and maybe replacing it with, for example, the world coordinates, which are stuff that never change inside the level. The thing is, is you have to understand a little bit how shader works. Now, I don't want to get into too much detail because shader is a world on itself, but you could say that shaders convert different coordinate system into uh, different spaces. So you would have the uh, local space of the mesh coordinate for each vertices of your mesh, then the shader, the vertex shader is going to take this and convert it into world space and then convert these world space coordinate into screen space coordinate and pass this information to the fragment shader who's going to decide the color of each of the pixel on your screen. But that means that when you're in the fragment shader, you're already in the screen space and you don't have access to the world coordinate of your objects. So I figured I should pass these world coordinate from the vertex shader to the fragment shader. But in 2D, Godot only gives you one matrix, the world matrix. And this world matrix actually includes both the conversion to the world space, but also to the view space in one single matrix. So it's impossible to convert to the world space. You only have access to the screen space. So I looked around on the internet for maybe a solution to my problem so that I could convert the coordinate of the mesh into world space instead of screen space inside the vertex shader. And I did find an issue on GitHub or a feature request on GitHub asking for exactly this, uh, be able to convert a mesh vertices into world space. Sadly, this feature hasn't been implemented yet, but they mention a workaround. Actually, they even added it to the documentation where they say you can add the world matrix as a uniform and then pass it to your material so that you can do it yourself in the vertex shader. Now, this doesn't really work if you're working with tile map because I'm not the one generating the mesh for the tile map. The tile map system is generating chunks to batch the tiles together. I'm not the one rendering them, so I can't set uniform for each single tiles that's being rendered because the world transform includes the local position and rotation of each of the tiles. So I have to pass a different matrix for each render. And I, I can't do that because I can't set a different material for each of the chunks being rendered by the tile map. So I kind of thought I was screwed at that point because I couldn't figure out how I could make it work. And you can clearly see the chunk if you use the local coordinate of each of the tile maps. Thankfully, when I was discussing this issue on my Discord, someone suggested that maybe I can pass instead the view matrix and just remove it from the world view so that I can get back the world coordinate. 
and that actually works. And um, <laughs> it's not the most clean way of doing things. And it does add a few matrix multiplications, but I mean, it works pretty well. So I was really happy with the system I got. And now my clouds move together with the rest of the level. And now that all my visual glitches were finally done and complete and working. It was time to figure out how to actually generate the tile map dynamically. And uh, actually, I recently have been playing with a little bit the noise generation algorithm in Godot. And there's a, an object in Godot that already generates noise for you. There's an open simplex noise object that you can create and then you can pass it 2D chords in it and it'll give you a number between minus one and one. And that's awesome because then I can just pass the chords in it of each tile on my tile map and then I can get a random value from the noise function and then if it passes a certain threshold then it becomes a nebula tile and if it doesn't then it's just empty. And then in the end I can call update big mask region method on the tile map to regenerate all the auto tiling and everything looks good. Since I don't always want my nebula to take the whole level, uh, one thing I did is also multiply the nebula value by the distance from the center of the nebula. This way I can make it zero when it's far enough so that I can control the size of my nebula. And then to implement the actual effect of the nebula on ships and stuff, we're kind of back to the usual pattern I use for everything else in Solar Rogue. Basically, I have a behavior node in my main scene that I called nebula behavior. And this behavior listens to all the new objects creation at level load and it caches the nebulas that it finds. And then when an object moves, it emits a signal on position updated and it's a global signal that everyone can listen to. So my nebula behavior listens to this event. And when an object moved inside one of the nebula tile, then it can apply the effects that the nebula has based on parameters inside the JSON of the uh, nebula object. Now there's still a bunch of things I have to test and implement. And there's a couple of things I'm a little bit worried about. Like for example, the performance of iterating over all my levels style to generate the nebula. Um, probably I won't be able to put two or three nebulas like that inside one single level, but as long as I have one, I figure it's gonna be fine. But uh, at least I can finally see the light at the end of the tunnel, and I think I'm gonna be able to add the nebulas inside the next version of Solar Rogue this summer. And that's gonna be it for this week. Thank you all for joining me, and see you all in my next episode. Bye!